In Fallout 3, we had the option to do a quest, The Replicated Man. In this quest, we learned of the Institute, scientists living on the ground making replicated humans. Then there's the Railroad, the Institute's adversary. In retrospect, yes, we could take this as a subtle hint for Fallout 4's location. This wasn't a quest that was tied to the Lone Wanderer's main storyline or even the Capital Wasteland. For me, the most it did was cause me to have speculation that they would subsequently explain why Dance Free Brotherhood of Steel was in the Capital Wasteland, but I digress. If we're going to take this as Bethesda's way of leaving Blue's Clues paw prints for guessing where to next, then we can sort of speculate that the next game is going to be in San Francisco. With Kellogg's memory, we see the Golden Gate Bridge subtly but obviously glowing in the background. And there's plenty other amazing videos that explores the San Francisco theory, but I wanted to give my speculation for an alternative state and possibly a storyline that Bethesda may choose to pursue. We've had two California-based games from the California company Interplay. With Obsidian, we ventured into the Mojave, Las Vegas, Nevada, and we saw California refugees in the NCR present there as well. Although it is likely that we'll be going back to Cali, I wanted to look at possibilities of the games taking place in Maine. Just hear me out. What if Dima is the link? Think about it for a second. We learn about our companion Nick Valentine's origin. Whenever we ask him where does he come from, he references that he lived in a town before coming to Diamond City, but he never tells us where. When we meet Dima, Nick's origin is a bit more explored, learning things that Nick didn't even know. Dima and Nick were created together. Dima saw the different personalities and tests that the Institute was putting him through, and after a while, Dima took Nick and escaped the Institute. With Nick now having the personality of a human, when he saw Dima, he was scared and rejected Dima, trying to fight him. Dima knocked him out and left him in the Commonwealth and fled to Maine to build Acadia. It's important to know because for one, Dima tries to imply that the sole survivor is a sin, which isn't true. Two, we're blindsided by the blind betrayal of Dance being a synth all along and he didn't know. We went through the same dilemma of being confronted with someone we trusted being one of them all along. Three, Kasumi thought she was a synth. She's not. She doesn't drop a synth component upon death but we start to get more and more understandings on how easy it is for one to question their own human existence. Since we had so many factions to choose from in Fallout 4, we probably won't see the return of characters like we did Dr. Lee and Elder Baxton from 3 to 4. What if we decided to destroy either faction? It wouldn't make sense to bring them back alive. I mean, it's already weird for me that Sierra Petrovita is alive and well in Nuka World, considering the fact that I usually put an end to her and Ronald after the Nuka Quantum Challenge. Would they play it safe and give us an early 2100s synth arc in Maine? One last honorable mention, we finally have weather mechanics in Fallout 4. It rains, it storms. Going far north, we could see a nuclear winter that everyone is hoping for. We can only wait and see. And that's the video, you guys. I hope you liked it. Like it if you liked it and get in on the conversation by commenting below and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Bye! Death is a preferable alternative to communism.